Hi everyone, welcome back to Conversations with Kathy, where today my guest is New York Times bestselling author and my very favorite author, Elizabeth George. She's the author of the Inspector Lindley series, and this is book 20, The, Punish the Punishment She Deserves. So, welcome back, Elizabeth. Thank you. So we've been talking about the detectives in the series. Um, let's talk about the setting. The, um, obviously, the books are set in England, um, but in many, many locations mm, around yeah. the country. So how do you choose where the next book is going to be set, and how do you do your research? I choose it based on uh, where I would like to go, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> and, and sometimes that's where I haven't been before. And sometimes it's a place that's been recommended to me. For example, years ago, I was at a book signing and a woman came up to me and said, have, have, have you set a book in Lancashire yet? And I said, no, should I? And she, she said, yes. And I said, why? And she said, because it's the witch country. And I took a piece of paper and said, write down every town you think I should go see. Yeah. Oh. And so that's why I sent a book in Lancashire. So sometimes a, a particular place is suggested to me by a reader. But uh, largely it's because I haven't been there and I want to go there. Or I've been to there before and I have decided, you know what, I think that this is really asking to be a location in the novel. So what I generally do is wh what I call a preliminary reconnaissance, where I'll be going over to, to Europe for some other reason and I'll either stop off before or stop off after in England and go to that particular location. It's usually an entire county. Um, and then I will drive around and just see if the place resonates with me, if it suggests story, if it's a place that I would like to write about. And if it is, then I, uh, while I'm there, I buy books about it. Tourist books, books that deal with its uh, flora, fauna, geology, topography. I buy maps, I, uh, and I take all of these things home. Then I read about it when I'm back at home. And while I'm reading, I'm looking for things in my reading that either suggest story or have potential to be places where somebody could die or where a body could be left. And what's really interesting to me is that you know, literally all over England there are uh, fabulous places to leave bodies. Oh my goodness, I mean, it's yes. It's just incredible. I have many, many more places that I'd ever be able to get to in one <laughs> career. So then I go back and uh, look at all of those places that I have singled out in these books. And every day I get up and I go to the particular location, I, uh, I take notes, I speak into a handheld tape recorder, I take many, many, many photographs, I come home in the uh, late afternoon or evening with, and have a cup of tea and transcribe my notes and do that day after day after day. Um, also, I help, I'll have interviews if I feel that there's something that I you know, need to know that only an expert can tell me, and I'll conduct interviews while I'm there, and then, if I'm really, really lucky and in a good place and everything, the planets align, by the time I come back, I have a really good idea of the killer, the victim, the motive, and the means. The means, that's the tricky part, is, is how somebody is actually going to die. Then when I come home, I first develop all my pictures, have them printed up, identify them, and then categorize them. So I have them in envelopes, so it'll say, you know, villages, prospective houses, um, and specific locations. So it'll say, you know, abbeys or uh, ponds or forests, or what, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I, I have those next to my computer. And then I begin the, the whole process of, of creating the novel, which is a very lengthy process that involves creating the characters first and um, understanding from the characters what the theme and the subplots are going to be and just moving on from there. Do you have a favorite location or a place that you'd revisit? Um, well, I've, I've set two books in Cornwall because that's where Lindley is from and, uh, and I, do, I do really like Cornwall a lot, but I, I wouldn't say that I necessarily have a favorite location for a book because uh, I like that process of moving around and showing, mm -hmm. the, uh, showing the reader different places. And some places are, are, turn out to be much more fascinating than I had any idea they would be. For example, I wanted to set a uh, book on the island of Guernsey in the English Channel. 
And uh, so I went there knowing nothing about it, doing my four-day preliminary reconnaissance. And so this is years ago, and uh, I, had, I had no idea that Guernsey had been the only part of the British Isles that was occupied by the Nazis during World War II. And I also had no idea that this was something that was still alive in their consciousness. This wasn't something that had faded away, even though this was in the 1990s. So having decided I was going to set a book on Guernsey, and having talked to a few people and realized what a big issue this was for, for them, I knew that I was going to have to have a, a story that was somehow connected to, to World War II. And that whole pro thing of being on Guernsey was so interesting to me. It's a really fascinating place. I remember that book because I believe Deborah was a, a yeah. significant, yeah. played a significant role in that. But one of the things that I appreciate about your books is, is setting, but it's also the atmosphere. The atmosphere of the place really creeps into the story so you know whether it's you know fog rolling in or it's dark or the sea or, or whatever it happens to be I think that really permeates the books and it's almost like the, the setting is a character yeah you know? and I, I appreciate your saying that I work really really hard on setting I don't think that uh, setting is my fort at all I um, I love reading books that have amazing settings you know Martin Cruz Smith is brilliant with settings the late Mary Stewart and her romantic suspense novels she was incredible with settings and, um, and I wanted to do that kind of thing for the reader so that the reader would actually feel not only as if they were there when they were reading it but also might be inclined to go there just mm -hmm. to see it for mm -hmm. themselves because that's what I did. I mean, I went to I went to the Island of Skye because of a Mary Stewart book. I went to Corfu for that same reason. I went to Box Hill because of Jane Austen and all these different places that were in other people's books. And I wanted to give the reader that kind of a feeling. Oh, I, I think, I personally as a reader, I think you have, and, and I think that's one of the joys of reading, isn't it? When oh, you yeah. can visualize a place in your mind yeah. and you think, I want to go there. I know um, lately my, um, where I'd like to go is the Shetland Islands because of mm. Anne Cleves, um, mm. just to see the, the desolate landscape. Yeah, so yeah. Would you ever consider setting a mystery on like a, a really remote location like oh, that? Yeah, so, definitely. You know? yeah. yeah, there's a lot to be learned in those locations. Um, one of the places, not particularly remote, but I that I've wanted to set a book, and I don't know if I ever will get around to it, is the Isle of Man, oh. which is, just sounds so fascinating to me because it's like this, you know, independent entity, and yet there it is, sort of trapped between, uh, you know, between Great Britain and Ireland, mm -hmm. and it just it sounds so interesting. I'd also like to explore or the Isles of Scilly, which are, you know, are part of England and you can't see them from the mainland and I think that would be a really interesting place to set a book too. So yeah, there's, a, there's and then, you know, the, the Inner Hebrides, the Outer Hebrides, I mean, there's really, really such a wealth of material in England, and in, in, in the UK, not just and, in England. And island culture is different than yeah. mainland culture. Yeah. For sure. So, I mean, just motivations and why people might commit murder would, might, might be a little different. Yes, you know? definitely. So, so one of the questions that I wanted to ask you, because I've always been curious, is where do you come up with your titles? Your titles have always intrigued me. So our latest book, your latest book, um, is The Punishment She Deserves. Um, but we have Playing for the Ashes, Missing Joseph, um, just to name a few. Um, the first book was A Great Deliverance, um, and then A Suitable Vengeance. So um, how do you come up with your titles? A variety of ways. Sometimes the title is something that I've heard. For example, um, I was at dinner with my um, publishing team in England one time and they were talking about playing for the ashes and I said, what's playing for the ashes? And they explained to me that, that um, when Australia and England meet for a test match, they play for the actual ashes, and the ashes are a uh, in a little bag, a little velvet bag that's kept at the <clears throat> the uh, Lord's Cricket Ground in a in a sealed um, plexiglass box. And what it was, what the ashes actually are, um, is one of the uh, the wickets that was, no, not the wicket, the wicket, they're defending the wicket, I can't remember, oh, the stumps. So there's a stump that's laid across the wickets in cricket. Okay. And the, uh, the guys that are at bat, as we would say in America, are defending the wicket. And what the, what the bowler, we would say pitcher, is trying to do is knock that stump off the, off the three wickets. And so what happened is that England lost the test match and they ran this little article in the paper um, that they had uh, 
that Cricket had died in Australia and uh, the ashes would be buried oh. there on the cricket ground. And so what happened is that uh, some women in Australia took the, uh, took the stump and burnt it and sent the ashes to England in this velvet bag. And so every year when they meet for a test match, it's called playing, playing for, the, for ashes. the ashes. And nobody gets, I mean, the ashes stayed there, mm -hmm. but that's just the term. And when they told me that, I thought, oh my God, what a great title for a book, but it's going to have to have something to do with cricket. Oh, sure. Because I couldn't have a title like that and not have it to do with cricket. So that's where that came from. But sometimes it's just from, it's, it's a word. Like, for example, I'll, I'll think about the book and I will think that, well, this book is, for example, largely about deception. People are deceiving each other. And what, what would be a good title that would go with deception? And then I would think of words that would go with it. And so deception on his mind was uh, was the title that I chose for a book because there were you know three different male characters who uh, had deception on their mind and so uh, it, it worked with the theme of the novel and so usually I mean frequently there it's a thematic thing like the punishment she mm -hmm. deserves is very thematic since the you know the female characters all are either they're being punished they feel they're being punished they want to be punished there's all kinds of things going on with the female characters that has that has to do with punishment and there is definitely a theme in each book and a different theme. yeah definitely. so and yeah. do you have any you know going in do you think I want to write a book about punishment or I want to write a book about redemption or I want to write a book about revenge or do you so, well, sometimes I do. Like Careless in Red was a, was is, is a revenge novel, but um, but interestingly, Careless in Red refers to uh, refers to the the mother of the murder victim, who is literally Careless in Red. Um, but but often it is uh, it's the kind of situation where I don't worry at all about about like the theme, but I do want to write about a specific underlying topic. So for example, in The Punishment She Deserves, uh, the underlying stuff has to do with binge drinking and the result of binge drinking. Mm -hmm. And that was I definitely wanted to, something I definitely wanted to look at. And because it's, uh, because of what happens in the book, it's a, it's a huge topic here in the mm -hmm. United States and in England as well. The book I'm working on now takes another social issue and, uh, and it, it's going to explore this particular, I don't want to tell you what it is, but it's a particularly um, very, very um, disturbing social issue that is not only going on in England, but it's an international social issue. So I want that to be the underpinning of the book that I'm going to be writing next. So there's frequently something like that that's going on. Um, and then sometimes it's like when I did a book called um, What Came Before He Shot Her, what I wanted to do is, uh, is that I set out to write a book in which a really good kid makes all the wrong decisions for all the right reasons. And you, the reader gets to see that, that play out in the course of the novel. It has sort of this, this really sad inevitability to what's going on because of the circumstance he finds himself in. Well, and that, I think, is, is one of the things that you do with your characters is sometimes they, they make wrong decisions, they make bad decisions, they're the villain, but you have a degree of empathy for them because in, in some cases you can say, oh my goodness, you know, I don't like what this person did, but you can understand perhaps why they went down the road that they did. Yes, yeah, you know? that, that's what I hope. I mean, that's why uh, I, you know, I've, I haven't had very few, dis I've had very few, you know, psychologically disturbed characters who murder because they're psychologically right. disturbed. I, I did a serial killer book because I, um, I wanted to do that. It's, I just wanted to see if I could carry off a serial killer book. And that person was, you know, was clearly, clearly disturbed. But for the most part, it's, it's more like the, uh, the suffering human psyche mm -hmm. that's acting out. Well, and that to me, honestly, is more realistic because, you know, I, I know there are serial killers, but when, when someone just makes a poor decision in the moment or, or decides to commit an act that is heinous, but, maybe, you know, but that's not indicative, perhaps, of who they, who they are. That's who they were in that moment. But, you know, or they who they became mm -hmm. over time as a result of mm -hmm. the circumstances. Like um, a banquet of consequences really is the, is, that's what's called a banquet of consequences, is that, is that over time, because of what was happening to these individuals, 
you know, things developed as they developed. And consequences ensued. <laughs> yes, exactly. So we only have a, a couple minutes left, but I wanted to ask you if you're able to tell us anything about your next book. Um, the only thing that I could tell you about the next book is that it's going to be a London book. Okay. It'll be in various locations in London, and um, it will, if I'm, if I, if I'm able to do it, it will feature all of the continuing characters. So St. James and Deborah will be in it as well as um, Barbara Havers and, and Lindley. And Winston? And when, oh yeah, and definitely Winston. Like Winston. Yeah, definitely Winston. Okay, yeah. all right. And I'm sure you hate this question, but I have to ask um, because I'm being very selfish, but um, how long does it take? to write a book, or when can we perhaps expect this next um, book? Well, this book I'm just beginning, so uh, the so it won't be out, pro I probably, you won't see it for probably two years. Okay. But the book that's going to be published next year is, uh, is a book that's called Mastering the Process. Actually, I think you'll find this really interesting, because what it does is, um, it's a book it's my, I wrote another nonfiction book that was about craft, mm -hmm. and that was just taking the elements of craft that go into novel writing and, and how, you, how you work with each element of craft. But the mastering the process is about my process. And what it does is it just shows the reader, it takes one of my books, Careless and Red, the book that takes place in Cornwall, and it, and it shows the reader how I actually put that entire book together. And it includes photographs that I took and, um, and my notes and my character analyses and my running plot outline. And, it, uh, and then it also balances it with the scenes from the book. So the opening is about research, and I choose these. I chose these. I think five pictures from the Southwest Coast Path, and then what follows that is the actual opening of the novel. So the reader gets to read about the research, see the photographs, and then see how the photographs got translated into the prose of the book. Oh, I'm very excited about yeah, that. I, yeah, I think I think people will find it really interesting. To and that's the truth. And that should be out next year. That will be out 2020. Yeah. Okay. And I'm sorry. The title is okay. Mastering the Process. Mastering the Process. So we will look for that at the Troy Public Library next year, and I will cool. certainly have something to look forward to to tide me over until your next book. And I do have to tell you when um, when you publish a book, I usually take at least one to two days off so I can just sit and read and get into the story. Oh, that's great. Thank I don't you. know that I finished it within two days, but I at least have a good start on it because I just don't want any distractions. So, well, Elizabeth, it has been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for spending time with me and answering all of my questions. I have many more, but I wouldn't keep you here for the next 38 hours. So You're very welcome. It's been a pleasure. So if you are looking for an absolutely fantastic mystery with wonderful characters, great setting, great plot, theme, and some depth, and also humor, which we weren't able to touch on, but um, a lot of humor, um, check out anything by Elizabeth George, and then come talk to me at the Troy Public Library and tell me what you thought. Have a good day. <laughs>